It's adventure time. We're going to take the Talaria Sting out again on another adventure. This time we're going to be going down to the Payson, Utah area. Uh, on the Nebo Loop, there's some trails there, and I'll tell you more about it as we ride. I left the house at 88% on the battery. We're down, down to 86% now. And if we look over here, you'll see that the car is estimating that we will get there with 60% remaining on the battery. We'll see how that goes. I'm sure it'll be less because we're towing, as you can see here on the camera. And it's, so we're gonna go another 37 miles, or uh, it's gonna take 45 minutes or so. And uh, we're heading down here, like I said, to uh, the Payson Canyon right here, and there's some trails. This is what the last 30 miles of energy consumption in this Tesla looked like, and this is the uh, American Fork Canyon trip that I did. And so you can see it was extreme energy uh, pr uh, consumption up here going up into the canyon and then extreme um, regeneration going back down. And so today is going to be similar to, the, to this going up Pacing Canyon. We are still in Pacing Canyon and we're getting close to our destination though. If you look down here the map has lost its background because we lost data and it didn't keep it. Uh, in any case we're one minute away uh, or half a mile and it looks like we're arriving with 57% on the battery. Now it was as low as 55% estimated arrival uh, but we got behind these slow trucks here and, and so we our energy consumption dropped. <laughs> the energy graph shows that we've been consuming 529 watt hours per mile, which is not as bad as I thought it would be. And we've arrived, we're at the staging area. On my last trip, this bike was completely destroyed. It was so, so very muddy. And I missed a few spots because it was getting dark, but I cleaned it up and it looks so much better. All right, we're getting ready to take off and I'm tracking this ride with Strava. The bike is at 100%. There are definitely a lot more dirt bikes up here today than the canyon yesterday, American Fork Canyon. But it's a holiday weekend, so that's obviously coming into play, but so was yesterday. One of these guys scouted up here already and they said that there's a a log that just fell recently so we're gonna see what's going on with that if we need to reroute or otherwise definitely not gonna have a dust problem today if anything it's still kind of muddy from the rain yesterday oh here's the log this is where Having a lighter bike is nice. I'm not even gonna try that. He did fell. Let's see what these guys do. Nice. Uh, I was calculating the calories burned, me trying to accomplish the same thing with this. <laughs> so this is 145 pounds. <laughs> So lifting the whole thing is a little bit, you know, I can do it, but hard, but one half at a time is so <laughs> right? doable. <laughs> We're doing a little bit of a trail repair here. The bolts on his back sprocket are loose, we just discovered. So we're tightening them up before we continue on our way. We've finished the trail repair. We've been going for 15 minutes and I'm still at 100%. <laughs> We've gone 0.6 miles. So I'm gonna continue on. Ah, oh, look at this view, love it. Definitely muddy here. Apparently there's a jump over here that somebody wants to hit up. Ah, fun. Too muddy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna continue on our way. Update on the bike, we've been going for 32 minutes and we've gone almost three miles, it's 2.91 miles, and we've used up 11% of the battery, we're at 89%. All right, this is the way we're heading next. So obviously on this ride, we have five riders instead of three that we had before. And so some people joined us and I am definitely the most inexperienced of the lot. And I'm keeping up all right, I'd like to say. I like to think anyway. That's good. I'm also very much the oddball with my electric bike, which I'm pretty used to because everything I do on electric is pretty oddball still. Whew. 
That was a lot of bouncing around and spinning of the rear tire. That bike is very smoky. Wow, these hills are so slippery. So it's all about keeping up the momentum. And my traction's like right on the edge of the whole way up. At least as far as I can tell, the tire's spinning a little bit. You can hear it. Status update, we have gone 3.72 miles. We've been going for 43, almost 44 minutes. The battery is at 85%. So we've used 15% of the battery to go for 45 minutes. So beautiful up here. I'll put my face shield down because there's so much flinging mud right now off me and the guy in front of me. Frank Young. Trails with that said. <laughs> this is really tricky. A lot of boulders and my tires are all muddy. So it's very slippery. Oh, this is a boulder feel if ever there has been one on this trail. <sighs> Status update, we've been going for an hour. We've traveled 4.64 miles and the battery's at 82%. It's my first time leading and I guess there's not too many forks that I'll get lost on, so that's good, hopefully. This is fun. Looks like there's some jumps here. Ooh, got some air. Yep. So can you tell me a little bit more about your trip you did up north? Yeah, man, it was kind of like a spur of the moment, um, like decision, um, like sitting at breakfast and realized like I had about a month of time to do something and I was thinking about doing the Idaho BDR. Yeah. And I was like, it'll take me like, you know, like maybe five, six days or so. Um, what am I going to do next? And I was like, I guess I can keep going. And I'm like, oh, oh. So I started doing some math on just like how long it would take to like punch all the way to the, um, you know, to the, to the Arctic Circle. Um, Arctic Circle. And then, you know, dip my wheel in the Arctic Ocean, you know, kind of as far, as far north yeah. as I could get on a motorcycle. Wow. Um, it's like kind of just one of those dreams I've had since I was a kid. And then, you know, being a dad, being a business owner, it just seemed like one of those things that was never going to be possible, you mm -hmm. know, with the responsibilities that I had, but something kind of unlocked. And I was like, you know what, maybe I, maybe I can do this. Um, yeah. So I went home and talked to the wife and she's like, go. Oh. Um, so That's I spent great. the next like four days kind of like packing and prepping and, um, like getting on my bike and, and making it happen, you know? So it was just like. One of those just like magical things where everything aligned to be able to make a trip like that, right? Like possible, you know. And, and, and so when you were on the trip, what was the gnarliest thing you experienced? So that last stretch to you know to the you know on the the first day on the Dempster Highway was probably the gnarliest stretch. Mm. Um, it was raining, the road was falling apart, um, cold. I'm you know hypothermic. Um, the wind's blowing so hard that I'm just I'm just getting punched sideways across the road. I'm just like, you know, crosswinds hitting me. And I'm just like, I'm just drifting sideways, trying to go in a straight line on my bike, wow. you know, and hands are, you know, hands are numb and, and you can't see cause your visor's fogged up and you're trying to crack it open and then you're just getting mud and stuff. And there's just nothing to hide behind. I mean, you just have this like Arctic prairie up there mm -hmm. and there's, you know, the tundra, like there's no, 
no place to go, no place to hide. And you just like, just, just grit it out, grind it out, you know, and you're getting cross rutted and you're scared. Yeah, that was like, that was probably the hardest, scariest, like nastiest bit of it because like there was no stopping. There was no like retreating. Like I'm like, you're in it. You just have to, the only way like out is through, you know. And, and you were by yourself, right? Yeah, running solo. The whole trip. Yep, the whole trip. Wow. Just running solo. So just a lot of time with like me and my thoughts. And, and, and uh, before you mentioned the uh, river crossing where it was really clear water and you misjudged the depth. Can you tell me that? Where yeah. was that? Yeah, so um, part of the trip, I wanted to do, you know, dirt through Idaho to get to Canada before I started my stretch all the way up. So, you know, started at the Utah border, um, Utah, uh, Nevada border on the uh, Utah or the Idaho backcountry discovery route. Um, and this river, probably day four, day five, I don't remember specifically, but um, yeah, I kind of drop in and, I've, you know, I've ridden through a lot of rivers over my life. Um, and I looked at this thing and, you know, looked you know, yay deep and look like, you know, rocks yay big and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a normal river crossing and, you know, glance at it and stand on the pegs and, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and hit it and only to realize that clear water was just like super deceptive about how deep it was, um, which meant those rocks that I saw that were like yay big were really like <laughs> big, nasty boulders yeah. that I'm dropping into. And as soon as my front end dropped into the water, I realized it was like, Okay, this is I've bad. made a serious mistake. Yeah, but the only choice, like there again, is just like hit it and get it, get through it, you know. Yeah. So trying to lighten up the front end and like get, uh, you know, get the front end over the big rocks and trying to carry some momentum like through the water before it just sort of like drowned me. Um, and it worked for most of the creek. Mm -hmm. um, but just as I was getting to like the tail of it, where I think like I'm out of trouble, um, back end kind of hit a big rock and knocked the bike sideways and kind of ejected me off and like you know i, I land in the river and i look back my bike's just like laying here mostly underwater i'm oh. like no you oh. know and scrambling to try like picking this thing up before it just completely fills up with water and right standing there like you know like imagine what to do next you know i'm mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere nobody's going to be coming for a long time like you know likelihood that my bike's drowned and i'm not able to like get it started um Thankfully, I was able to get it like it turned over. It didn't sound like water locked. Um, it was it spit the spit the water out of my exhaust that it had it kind of collected down there. Um, but it didn't seem like any water had gotten in my air box. So awesome. um, it finally spluttered, finally splattered. And, you know, I was able to like yeah. ride out of there. So it and wound up being a non event, but it was a scary. Yeah, it was a scary moment. Just like and stuck. Did you do that trip on this bike or was it a different? No, one? I was on a Husqvarna Norton 901 for oh, okay. that trip yeah gotcha so big adventure bike good times so, thanks yeah, for 30, telling me that 33 days running by myself like yeah. idaho and then up through canada and then out to anchorage to get some service done on my bike and yeah then rode home and then every opportunity i'm you know you're out right I'm, I'm single tracking you know if there's a if there's a day where i can get in the dirt i'm, I'm yeah. taking it so well and it's a ton of fun I'm, I'm loving it yeah this is awesome man i've only had this bike since uh, uh six days ago like <laughs> the way that the technology on these electric bikes is advancing, like this yeah. may well be my last like dinosaur powered machine. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just like this, these things are getting super, super good. Yeah. Um, so. it, my, my bike is like 75% the size of all of your bikes. Right. And yet I'm here with you. Yep. And riding all the yeah. same stuff <laughs> and having a ton of fun. A ton of fun. So. Well, let's keep going. Yeah, man. Quick update on my bike. We uh, have been going 5.5 miles and we've been going for an hour and 19 minutes and the battery is at 79%. That was my first overtake on this bike. I'm not sure if he's having technical difficulties because he was going slower than usual. Look at this, this is a fun, straight, non-rocky trail. It's unusual. Everyone hits straight shots like that and goes crazy fast. Well, status update, uh, we've been going an hour and 24 minutes, it's distance of 6.72 miles, batteries at 77% on the Talaria MX-4. This is the bike that I was riding on my first ride, which was now about a week and a half ago, or I guess we're getting close to two weeks ago. But yeah, that was a ton of fun. But it got me to buy this Talaria.
All right, this is going to eat up the battery. We're at 76%. Just watch. <laughs> We're going to go, let's see, 6.84 miles. Let's see how far we go on this asphalt. But last time, it ate the battery bad. Also, it was very steep on that one, though. This is still uphill, but not as steep. We're going, uh, let's see, I'm going to speed up. We're going 44, 45 miles an hour. So let's see, 7.37 miles now. I'll do the math later, and we're at 74% on the battery, so I think that was 2% <laughs> in a very short distance. Definitely is much better at sipping electricity when on trails. There's a lot of great camping up here. I'll take note, come back. So, yeah, there was a rider on a horse that went by, and we thought he said there were two more coming, but he might have just been throwing the peace symbol. So, that's why I'm going front. If I run into a horse, it won't startle the horse. And I'll just pull over really quick and then warn the horse rider that there's motorcycles coming behind me. Oh, look at this. Opening up into a big mountain meadow. So far, I like this trail more because it is not as rocky and rooty. It's mostly just dirt. Oh, it's like it's an intersection. Rock Springs Trails, with that said, on the side of Jones Ranch. So we just did Jones Ranch. And Rock Springs Trail is off to the side. Oh, and there's the horseman. Thanks. So there was one more, but not two. Yeah, that way. This trail is notably wetter than the other one for some reason. Just the way the clouds pass through, I guess. And now this is the same way we came in and these we met up with those three other guys. So it's been traveled enough today. It's gotten pretty churned up. And you can see the horses have been through here. They definitely chew it up too. It's not just dirt bikes. Oh, those horses' hooves are, they're heavy. Oh, they're slipping. Yeah, you can see the slippiness of the, the slipping marks of the hooves on, in the mud. It's interesting. Oh, there's much more horses. They obviously know we're coming. Hello. Good. Sorry, we got uh, four more bikes coming through. <laughs> Their path is blocked. We only saw one horse in American Fort Canyon yesterday. It was a Friday though, today's Saturday. And so, there's been a lot of horses here. Oh, wow, that's a rough spot. But even just at the parking lot, there were a lot of horse trailers there. So clearly there's a lot of mountain today. And I think this is probably a more favored location. This is quite the bog. Let's come around over this way. It's not quite as bad. This is a muddy hill. I cannot stop on that hill. Just controlled descent. Ooh, this is even steeper here. Wow, the aspens here are beautiful. And this trail, gorgeous. Going through these aspen groves. All right, end of that trail. Joan, Lower Jones Ranch Trailhead. Yep, oh, there's the rest of us. So it says on that sign over there that that was a three mile trail that we just did. Oh, let's do a stats update on the bike. So according to Strava, we've been riding for an hour and 45 minutes. We've gone 10.44 miles and we're at 68% on the battery. I'm still going 45 as a top speed. It, it can go faster, but this is about matching their speed and I don't want to burn through more electricity than I have to, just in case. Because when my battery's done, I'm going home. I don't have a way to charge it on the trail. And that is one of the limitations of electric. When we take this out with our RV, I will be able to charge it at the RV, so that'll be awesome. We can come out here boondocking, have a base camp, camping location, go out riding the trails, and then charge it up when we get back to the trailer. 
Are we doing Lofer Mountain? Yeah. Okay. A little hope at the beginning because it was fairly dry, but nope. This is sloppy. Oh, wow, we're, we're riding in the stream. This is gonna make our bikes like yesterday. Blackhawk Trail goes that way. I let them go in front because I don't totally know where we're going and there was another side trail. And you know, sharing the front is always fun. Oof. Oh man, got my boots all wet on that one. Poor girl, she's running to keep up with them. Oh, there's a mountain bike right there. Not sure where the rider was. Oh, I think yeah, that's a grouse. Ooh, this is really steep and it's muddy. This is a great trail, I love this. Oop. This is awesome. Benny Creek. I've done this before on my bicycle. Cool view. Yeah, that was a fun segment. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, there's a bit of a tricky section just right here. I'll just keep going then. Oh, this is the tricky section. Whew. Yeah, I can see what he was talking about. Big, big, massive roots and it's steep. Lofer Mountain. Ooh. My feet were scraping on both roots on either side. Ooh. That was, my uh, ground clearance isn't as high as these guys. So I was not sure if I would be able to do that one all right. My regen braking is on maximum still number four sometimes i accidentally hit the arrow buttons and adjust it down but i just checked and it's still there wish it was stronger still this is a really narrow section That was a big ledge I just dropped off and the uh, bottom of the bash plate didn't hit. So that gives me a better idea of the ground clearance on this thing. It's really good. That was, fun. <laughs> that was so fun. That's great, man. Yeah. Should I keep going? Yeah. Ooh. Oh boy. Yeah, no problem actually. <laughs> Spot. <clears throat> that was the hardest hit on the bash plate that I've hit so far. It was a rocky a rock sticking up. Yeah, well, can't really see it. I have to get underneath when I get back. So we've gone 13.85 miles. We've been going for two hours. And the battery's at 58% on the Telaria. Good times. At this point, we took a much needed break and I took the opportunity to fly my drone and get you these awesome aerials showing you the location that we're riding. All right, we have finished a break after a few minutes. So I'm gonna continue on the way. Someone else already headed down. So just as a quick update on the bike while we ride. So we're at two hours and 26 minutes, 13.92 miles and the uh, battery of the Telari is at 58%. And I still have it in level four regen, which is the maximum. This is a fun trail. Whew, that was a really sharp 
switchback. The turning radius on this bike is excellent. We just completed Benny Creek and we've gone 14.86 miles. Uh, we've been two and a half hours and we're at 58% on the battery. We have another short uphill section of highway, but now we're gonna be hitting a side trail. I misspoke earlier, there are actually six of us here, five others, and then with me included six, of course. Oh boy. Cool trees, I mean, burnt out unfortunately, but makes for a cool, eerie setting. Should not have gotten that close. I'm lucky he didn't spring. Oh, this guy might. Well, this is very wet. Getting out of there. Whew. That was not a great place to pass. Uh, I got sprayed. I'm not sure if he needs help. A couple of people got through. How did you so muddy? <laughs> I, yeah, I should have stayed back in, but I didn't. And then he was starting to spray me. I'm just like, I got to get out of here. You got super roosted. Yeah, that's it. I got super roosted is right. We've now been riding for two hours and 52 minutes and we've gone almost 16 miles and the battery on the Talari is at 51%. Mud splinging. We're at 50% on the battery as we do this uphill section and the highway always takes a lot more energy, but we've only been doing it for very short distances so far. And just like that, we are back to our vehicles. So overall trip stats, 16.21 uh, miles. We went for two hours and 55 minutes, average speed of 5.5 miles per hour. Battery's exactly at 50%. Did great, and we could keep going. We're just playing around a little bit more before we head home. I could totally bring my trailer up here. This is doable. This could be home base. I could charge the Talaria from the trailer and then just head out on trails. I'm totally gonna do that with my family. I'm gonna go scout out this boondocking location over here. So that sign said camping. So anywhere along here can be camped now. And so far, this is a very doable trail that I could do with my trailer. And obviously there's a whole ton of other people up here, so very much doable. And a lot of space right there. Let's see what is further up. And another awesome spot. This would be amazing. Totally doable. This trail or road is still doable though. We could come further up and that's what I'm scouting out to see what else is up here before I'm here with my trailer to know what our options are. No, they're really, oh, there's one. That is a nicer, smaller spot that we'd prefer away from others. Here's another one. Uh, I hate this, people just park their campers and who knows when that person's gonna actually be here. They're just taking up space. This road clearly goes on for a lot longer, but I think I've seen enough options. This looks, I don't know why that's fenced in. That's a pretty sweet spot too and there's trails right out of it. So everybody got back to the trail and then we wanted to keep going? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear that. It was my fault. I'm not done yet. It's a dirt biking weekend. Let's go do the other. Yeah. There's another loop by this campsite we usually camp out. Well, as a um, point of reference, uh, my bike is at 44%. I've been riding around some additional since we got back. And looking at Strava, we've been going for three hours and six minutes, and we've gone 18.2 miles. So we're going to keep having some fun. <laughs>
Beautiful horses. There's a great site for camping right here. Tricky spot. What a beautiful meadow. I probably said that too many times on this trip. But it's true. Tons of fun. A little bit funner without all the stops, huh? Yeah. 26% on the battery after that segment. Uh, and I gotta pay attention to writing. All right, there we go. Whoa! Still lifted the front end up. There we go. All right, so 21.37 miles, three hours and 20 minutes, and I'm at, whatever I said, 26% on the battery. Frog pond, okay. This guy just showed up on his Talaria. So you have a Talaria MX-4 just like I do. Yes. Awesome. And he's got kids handlebars, I love that. I'm gonna get those. And then he's upgraded his headlights and then he's got wider foot pegs. Uh, he's upgraded his tire to... Uh, the Kenda Trackmaster. Kenda Trackmaster. Rear, rear tire, I'd look at the front tire in a 19 inch. 19. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna do it, you can probably put it on the back and it's got a really similar tread pattern. Mm -hmm. It works really good in the mud. Awesome, yeah, it looks like it will. Thank you so much for your information. Go have fun. You're on a nice, quiet, fun bike. Yeah, it is totally fun. Have a good day. Great, we'll see ya. Frank Young Trail. We are back to the trailhead. And looking at the stats on my bike, we were riding for exactly four hours and we drove 27.17 miles. And the Telaria Sting MX4 is at 12% on the battery. Oh, and the odometer is now exactly at 500 miles as well. That's fun. So I'm done riding for the day, obviously. I'm gonna get my bike trailered up and head home. Overall, I had an enormous amount of fun and the battery on my camera was worse, did not do as well as the battery on the Telaria Sting. Also, I am super happy with this cell phone mount. It's been uh, fun having the stats right there in front of me the whole time. And I can pop this off, which is harder to do with one hand, obviously. And I'll show you here uh, how it's mounted. This just has done amazingly well considering all of the crazy riding that we've done today and I haven't had to adjust it at all. Also let's do a status update on the mud. Nowhere near as bad as the muddy ride that we did up in American Fork Canyon but definitely collected some. Uh, this back, this area down in here was just piled with mud when we did AF Canyon in the mud and this is just splashed. It'll wash off relatively easily. And got a good amount piled up here on the heat sink at the front. I've gotten the bike up on the trailer, pretty easy. Another thing that was funny, I thought, I haven't turned this off all day. I've just left it on continuously for four hours plus because it doesn't really matter when you turn it on or off. It's just ready to go all the time. We are back in the car heading down to go get something to eat. We're at 43, or sorry, 53% on the battery. I think it was 54% just a little bit ago, but a little bit of standby loss. And we're gonna be regenerating. I'm gonna pull up the energy graph and we'll see what it looks like when we get to the bottom. We've just exited the steep downhill portion of the canyon. The uh, battery got down to 50, or up to 56%. So we gained 3% coming out of that. But for what it's worth, we were not all, all the way at the top of the Nebo loop. I'll put a card above to the video I made uh, when we drove the entire Nebo loop so you can see what that data uh, looks like in this same car and we were not towing on that trip. This is kind of fun. We're at 301 
watt hours per mile per for average of the last 30 miles and you can see these extremes of going up into the canyon and then the regen coming back out of it I am back home and you can see the battery is at 37% and I'll put on screen how much that was total round trip to go all the way to the Nebo loop and back looking at the energy graph we have 411 watt hours per mile over the last 30 miles so while towing this small trailer with the uh, Telaria on it this is probably about what I would expect to get in the future and the reason why I say that is because you can see the regen, re regen from coming out of the canyon is all off the screen now so this is all freeway driving at about 80 miles an hour I had a ton of fun today and we definitely put a lot of miles on the Telaria but that was four hours of fun some break time mixed in there for sure uh, I will say that you know the battery clearly is biased on the high end meaning that it takes a lot longer to bring down the percentage down to 50 percent we drove rode around for i think it was about about three hours on the first half of the battery and then the last hour was the second almost half of the battery because i finished at 12 percent so keep that in mind don't think that when you get to 50 percent that you how you you now can do double what you just did it's going to be uh, probably more like you have another 25 percent left so that's kind of interesting how they've done that. Something I didn't mention this morning uh, is the RV's battery. I actually discharged the RV into the Tesla this morning and I got it down to 6% this morning. So you can see that while I was away riding, the RV battery charged up 80% and is now at 86%. And I've just plugged in the Tesla to the RV and so I'm discharging it and you can see the Tesla is pulling five amps right now. And I could pull up to 20 amps, but I prefer to not do it as quickly simply because it warms up the battery and you can see the battery there's at 91 degrees that's not too bad but I prefer not to uh, tax the battery overly much so I discharge it more slowly so I'll be discharging it for the next several hours and get it down into the low state of charge again uh, for the next time we drive the car somewhere else I tend to keep the RV battery down closer to around 25 to 30 percent uh, because we are discharging it primarily into the car but the car isn't always available since we drive it so uh, I'm able to um, have a lot of time between uh, when the car leaves and comes back before the RV batteries fill up. I'm trying to avoid letting them fill up just so that I can maximize the solar yield from the solar panels. If you're interested in more information about this, I have made other videos. I'll put a card above to the video how I charge my Tesla from the RV. Uh, it's just kind of an interesting interplay between me driving this Tesla, taking my Telaria out on the trails today, and discharging the RV battery, and it's all this fun interplay that I play with. In any case, I'm going to get the bike unloaded, washed off, and ready for the next ride. I just finished cleaning it off, and I thought I'd show the condition of the bash plate. So you can see here on this leading edge corner, there's a couple of hits that it took. The worst one is, though, right here. You can see how it's dented in, and that one I definitely felt. And then over here on this edge, it's got a couple of minor hits as well. But overall, the bash plate did what it's supposed to do, and it, it got the hits instead of breaking something more important. Now that the Telaria is clean, I am going to charge it up. And I thought I'd just point out, I thought this was interesting. It's now indicating 9% remaining where it was 12% when I put it on the trailer. And it definitely hasn't been used since then. And I turned it off, so I don't really know. In any case, I have plugged in my kilowatt meter here and I'm going to plug in the charger for the Telaria here. There we go. And so you can see the cooling fan here kick on. And then if we look here at the readout, this is how many watts it is pulling right now as it's charging the Telaria. You'll see it max out here just a little bit above 700 watts and that's where it's going to remain during the majority of the charging cycle from what I've noticed. It's only at the very end that it starts to taper the charging. This measures the total amount of electricity that is flowing through it in kilowatt hours. So when the Telaria is finished charging up completely I'm going to check this and show you how much energy went into it. It has a 2.7 kilowatt hour battery but the question is from 9 to 100 percent what's that going to be? All right, here's an update a while later. You can see the battery is indicated at 100%, although it is still pulling 519 watts. So it is doing the cell balancing right now. But it's close enough. It's used up most of the energy that it will. And you can see it has taken on 2.42 kilowatt hours. And that has been over the last 193 minutes. I like their robust heat sink on their charger. Uh, they have a fan blowing right here and obviously very good cooling and if I put my hand on it it's fairly cool here on the top but on the bottom it is warmer but I'm sure it is much cooler than it could be 
looking at it with my FLIR thermal imaging camera, you can see here on top it's right around 100 degrees. If we look down here on the side, the hot part looks like it's about 107, which is still not too bad. And then if we look down here on the bottom, it's more like 112 degrees. So uh, they're definitely doing a good job with heat mitigation, and there's no concerns here. It's here in our garage where it's around 80 degrees or so. And so as I showed, it's been charging for about 3 hours and 20 minutes. So it's had plenty of time to get as about as hot as it's going to get. And it's been charging at the max power that whole time. So 115 degrees is about the maximum that it's getting to on the bottom. And the rest of it is uh, just over 100 degrees. Kudos to them for a good design on this power supply. This is the Strava interface on the internet instead of just the app. So this has more information in it, and that's why I wanted to show you a couple of stats here. So the, the distance and the other stats are the same that I already talked about. And we talked about how the elapsed time was four hours. I was surprised to see that our actual moving time was only two hours and two minutes. So we took a lot more breaks than I realized, I guess. And then the elevation change is quite relevant to battery consumption, and so 4,800 feet of elevation. I believe this has changed both up and down, or maybe it's just up. I'm not 100% sure. If you want to clarify how Strava tracks elevation, you put that in the comments below. And so then if we go down here to this, we can see the elevation across the entire route. So if, as I move my mouse along this graph, you'll see where we were on the map at that time. And I'm scrolling all the way across here. And you can kind of see there at the end, we did this last big loop before we called it quits for the day, finally. And if we go up here over to the analysis tab, it adds two more lines of this graph down here, which is kind of interesting, seeing the estimated power and the speed. So as I move across this, you can see it just goes up and down pretty average. And then a couple of times, like right here, the, the speed and the estimated power jump up dramatically. And that's when we're driving short little distances on the highway to jump to a different trail. And then also over here, we finished this last ride, and then it was just down the highway for a while going downhill. So we weren't hardly using any power, but the um, speed was quite high. So with that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.